Oh, this is Sean Taylor Brown Sugar Talk under Black Unicorns today, darlings. So, um, today I just ran over something that was like really cool. It's by Lorenz Tate, R L A R E N Z T A T E. I know y'all know Lorenz Tate, but anyway, um, it says until the lion tells his side of the story, the tale of the hunt will always glorify the hunter, and that is freaking true. It's true. It really will. It always glorify the person that's going after somebody instead of the person that is standing up strong and is being and is actually just a good person. You see what I'm saying? When really in life, the cook the like good people are gangsters. You know, like it takes so much to cause injury. Like, what, what was it? No, not so much. It takes so little to cause injury, but it takes a lot to prevent it. And so I think people tend to go towards that way because it's like, oh, yeah, let me just let me just do what I do. Let me just, you know, um, yeah, it, it takes I, I was telling somebody about this, too. Like I was feeling bad one day and I was like. I think that's why they always say it takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile because, and I know I hate, women hate it when people like smile, you know, because we really be going through a lot of stuff. Like seriously, if somebody would have walked up and been like, I'm so happy that I was like, it was like I was in quarantine for like a year with my son because like December to, it was like a few months. Like I didn't have a job. I was just a stay at home mom for a little while. So um for a few months and so now it turned into like what a couple years well a year i guess it'll be a year and some months so anyway um if i would have been released you know at the time or whatever i would have still been going to the hospital or doing whatever i was doing it and it is it's like always like and that, I, that woke me up it woke me up one night and that, that's why i think if this rings like true to me until the lion tells his side of the story, the tale of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. And so um, it rings a bell to me because I actually woke up last night and I thought about that. I was like, you know, I wonder what the story was. I wonder if they sat around in a circle and just talked and laughed about it. And it was just like, they're going to tell what, the, what kind of shit they used to do, you know, and if it was all about me or why they thought it should have been about me or what it was that made them want to create those moments or whatever they thought they were doing with me. So, um, and were they watching? Were they standing around watching? Or, you know, were they stuck? Were they sneaking in the house? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, was it a lot of other stuff going on that I just don't know about? Like, it's feelings that I have about it. And it's like, that's what I feel. But I don't know for sure. Like, I can make up stories about it. But all I ever saw was this guy. So, um, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it just feels so fucking creepy to me. You know, it's so fucking creepy. That's why I used to tell people the stories to them. Like, yeah, I want to see if you know him. I want to know if you know him. And I would be like so proud about it. It's just, oh, just so I know that if, it, if, in one day, when he, in the day that he drove past me in that car, it was just like. I hate you. Like I had this this feeling in my stomach that I just wanted to, I just want to fucking hurt him. You know, it's just like, and I was so afraid that at that moment because it's like I really want to run him off the road. Like I'm just like looking at him. I just turned my head and I told my son I was like I'm about to have an anxiety attack. And my son is like, really? Like yeah, I'm gonna have an anxiety attack. So he asked me why, and I told him that's the guy that um that I think like filmed me or something like you know filmed me or something like that and uh yeah I, I actually thought about that i was like just the boldness of me telling somebody i want to kill him you know just somebody getting me to the point where i want to kill him and the funny thing is is that all this stuff comes from just conversations i would have with this guy that i met off but match.com or something like that somebody that was helping me through like all this stuff i was going through you know like i was i had actually left a a guy left me for being in a, in a, a bad relationship, a abusive relationship, and I just needed to talk to get like get all this stuff like just off my chest and um just to think of all the men that were already involved before 
I even try to get help for myself. And so, yeah, I, I, that, until the lion, until the lion tells his side of the story, he's going to always glorify the hunter. And it's like, how could you? How the fuck could you glorify that? You know, and the funny thing is, I, I always saw those movies, like, when I was little, like, when the woman was, like, uh, somewhere, and he seduced her into taking pictures, or, you know, she didn't want to do it, or um, having sex, and she didn't want to do it, or putting in a porn, and she didn't want to do it. You know, all those different things. It was, it, I'm not going to say it was just an awful thing. It's just, like, everything that carried over, all the weight. That, that that person brought to me that I didn't want in the first place, you know? Like, I'm telling you, if I, you it's just like, man, I, it, no, no, I don't want to do a threesome, you know? Um, I only wanted to be with you, you know? I, want, I only wanted him. And then at some point, I think one day he smacked me, and I, I know I want to, I looked at the ex, and I was like, I was, I you know, I believe if I would have fucked him up, I wouldn't have realized that he abused me. And I think that was God, like, just, like, he's a very abusive person. He just abusive. He would, like, try to talk to other women in front of me, like, all kinds of stuff. And I guess the whole time, maybe he was recording or filming it or something like that. And um, just abusive, just completely abusive. And me, I was so elusive to it. I thought that that's what, um, I didn't think that. I didn't think about him in a relationship I didn't think him of him outside of relationship. I just knew I wanted to be in his company. You know, I just knew that it was like a luring of me. And so when I go back and I think, let me take control of my story. That's what I'm doing. I'm taking control of my story because I think that it's very ignorant for a group of grown men that should not have even been on a campus in the first like place. Like it actually should have been a gift to you to actually be there to learn with us, right? And then to set it up like that, like to set it up to the point where that's what you knew you wanted from me. You want to hear my voice. You want to hear my you want to hear my voice or whatever it was that you wanted from me at the time. And it's like, how sick could you have been for you to want to have me go through any of those situations? And then to actually still want to follow me or still want something else from me. I think it's cruel, I think it's rude, and I think it's very distasteful. And I can say that as many, many times as I want to, but people who out there who still feel the need to um, negate the sexual experience or negate my feelings or whatever, they would probably find a way to make it out like, you know, what I'm saying is really a joke, and it's not. It's not a fucking joke at all. And I don't know. That's it. I'm... It's so, it's so fucking irritating. It's it, it's irritating not to have justice, you know. Um. It really the fuck is. It's irritating. It's irritating for people to believe abusers against a, an abused person. And and the funny part of it is, it's like most of the women would also take their side too because they were already jealous of me. And it was like, okay, well, why are they jealous of me? Like, I didn't have a clue. And then I always think about the R. Kelly part. Like, does R. Kelly had a video? Like, you know, like, what the fuck do R. Kelly got to do with it? Like, it was like everybody would call. Like, I told y'all I got, like, two calls. And the girls would be like, I'm at R. Kelly. Shantae, I'm at R. Kelly house. And it's like, okay. Like, I don't want to be at R. Kelly house. You know, like, it wasn't nothing that I wanted to do. I'm not a big fangirl you know i'm not it's like it's just not a big thing for me like i've been around people with talent and just because a person has talent doesn't mean they have a soul you know like just because a person can sing perfect example anthony hamilton he made that song about having a baby and kids and i'm talking about you can feel that shit all of us believe that anthony hamilton had a kid and he was actually waiting to have a baby by wedlock i mean i mean in wedlock so I'm not saying that him, he himself is, like, what he was doing was wrong. It wasn't. That was just how he felt in the song. Like, he put himself in the song. So, you can, like, be around people with talent. It don't mean that they actually mean what they say. It don't mean that they actually are who they say they are. 
you know, they actually teach us in class about all the lies that we should tell and the entertainment and all the different stuff. So fuck all that. You know, I don't, I don't give a fuck like the parties and shit. No, I don't want that. I want, I do want my own set of fame, but I don't want to give it up at the cost of, of what that person did to me. You know, I don't want it to be like, um, a sexual escapade or whatever. You know, I want it to be in love and in light and in life and all this good stuff. So, I don't know. I really like that. I like the comment is dating Tiffany Haddish. I don't know if that's true, but I think they need each other. I think she need his calmness and I think he need her wild spirit. He really do. Like, I think it's like a good mesh in relationship. When I saw that they was on a date, I was like, that's cool as fuck, you know, because really he a cool guy. I mean, seriously, and she like a cool chick, you know. So I think just like that balance is going to help them. So anyway, <clears throat> so anyway, yeah, I am at this point, man, it's like, I don't know what to say. You know, I don't know what to do, but what I'm saying is, is that it's my story that I need to tell. My coochie don't belong to nobody but me. So I'm the bitch that's going to tell the story. And whatever the fuck you got to say, you're going to have to just shut the fuck up because it ain't really about you. It ain't about you and your poor upbringing. It's not. So, yeah. Fuck you. Fuck all y'all. That's it. And I know I said it a lot, but I really... I, fuck y'all. Fuck you. Fuck you. Every day I see the contribution that I give to the world and who I am and, like, all the stuff I fought through and just being able to love me and through everything and... I don't know. I, I'm actually thinking, okay, Shante, even though you had to go through your breakdown, even though you had to remember all those things, has it been so bad? And yes, it has. But in the end, I learned how to, I'm actually turning my son into a doctor, a healer even, you know, and I'm learn, learning more about him too. So it wasn't a cost that I had to pay, you know. It's his cost. He It's costing my kid, but at the same time, I think it's costing him growth outside of what it is and positivity. Um, we've been had some hard times, and we just make it through with our stories and our imagination. And so, yeah, in the end, fuck y'all. It ain't yours to tell. It's enough killing this shit on TV. Let me tell the story of me, you know? So, um, yeah, anyway, I love people, too. I love those who love me. And I apologize if I got any shit wrong about anybody. But, or any feelings at the time. It's just, y'all gotta know, like, it was a lot. It was a lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. And then for somebody to come back with the same shit and do it again, it was a lot. They did the wrong thing. So it was a lot. It was a real, it was a lot. It was a lot. It was harsh and it was horrible. It was a lot. Um... And I know most women don't make it through. And this is after I actually had the nervous breakdown. Like, I actually knew that somebody was trying to harm me. Like, that was part of me having a nervous breakdown. It's like I couldn't get the negativity out of my body. Like, I couldn't get it out of my head. And um, that's when those guys came and started all the rapes and stuff. So, anyway, I think that's it today. I just, I saw it and it's like, man, I really did think about that last night. Like, it's for you to tell your story. It's not for anybody else to tell your story, love. It's for you. And um, that's it. So anyway, it's Shantae Brown Sugar Talk on the Black Unicorns. And you had a strength. We really do have a strength. If you live and you had a strength. And even if you did, you had a strength too. So, um, yeah. It's, it's a gorgeous day and just enjoy it. You know? Oh, man. I don't want to cry today.